Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to take you on a walk through the garden to show you what's going on right now in the beginning part of May. This is the second week in May here in Zone 5B, Central Michigan. And so I'm just going to give you a walk through of what's going on in my garden and what more needs to happen out there. So let's go for a walk right here. On Garden Jen's journey. All right. So the first stop is my container bed area. Uh, these are various containers that I have in here. Some are. 55 gallon food grade drums that my husband cut in half and uh, made pellet um, supports for them. Others are 10 gallon pots that we have in here. And it's kind of in a uh, funk right now because we just rebuilt the dog pen and so a lot of stuff was moved. We also uh, built the shed here for my supplies for my soap and craft business which I have a link below in the description box if you want to check that out. So yeah, it's in a funk right now, but uh, we got things going. In here I have, these are onions, all global onions that I had transplanted from my winter sown jugs. They're doing pretty good. And these beds, it's kind of hard to see because of the color of the soil. But these are all Spanish onions here. In here and underneath this frost row covering are my greens. I have various mustards, kale, and spinach in these beds here. Now I'm going to take you over to the main garden. I almost forgot to show you my pot of chamomile. All this chamomile was transplanted from right here where I used to have this container. This container was always full of chamomile every year, which really easily sells seeds. So right here when my husband built the shed was a whole bunch of brand new chamomile sprouts this year. So I transplanted them into this pot. So we're now in the main garden looking towards my rose bed area and some things changed here. Like I said, we re rebuilt the, um, the dog run which used to be about 8 foot tall because it actually used to be an old chicken run when we first had chickens. So that fence got torn down and a shorter fence was put in its place. Um, so things are a little wonky here. Um, my climbing roses, I have to reattached to the fence um, but they're doing good I have three new roses right there right there and right there that are added to the garden and I have a fourth rose over there uh, brand new that's added to the garden my darling little flash loves to roll on the tile that we have here overhead is the electric wire that electrifies the fence that goes along the pasture so we have to have um, a walkway for the landlord to be able to check that pole to make sure everything's hooked up correctly. So along the area I do have irises that are really starting to grow tall. There's no uh, bulbs on them yet as far as flower heads, but they're getting there. And you can see how huge the uh, rhubarb is. Let's see if I can zoom you in here. There's actually a flower head starting to form on that. I'm going to have to break that off. And then my daffodils are done for the season, so it's time to start thinning them out. This bed here is my medicinal herb garden. 95% of these, well, we'll say 90. 90% of these are perennials. They come back year after year. And then I do have some annuals that I put in here throughout uh, just to uh, fill it up and... Um, it works very, very well. It's colorful. These herbs have a lot of good medicinal qualities. And when they bloom, the, all the pollinators really love them. I also added some color in the spring by planting tulips in some of my bare spots. Um, so it's really looking nice. 
in my pots I just have canna lilies planted um, so we'll see if those sprout to um, grow some beautiful lilies I love cannas they're really really pretty they have a uh, very beautiful foliage as well as flowers so we'll see if they um, sprout or not I'm not sure sometimes the bulbs that you buy in the stores are duds <laughs> but anyways so but uh, yep the medicinal beds doing really good a lot of things are greening up and are really starting to, to grow we've got bee balm here and we have lemon balm next to it valerian um, which I learned uh, I need to really cut the flowers off before they go to seed because it is a rampant self-seeder. It can become invasive if you're not careful. And then behind that is yarrow. It's really filling in nicely. I have some thyme. I've got two things of thyme. This one's lemon thyme and the one behind us was just regular common thyme. I have a couple of different kinds of cone flower, also known as echinacea. Chives. And I have some hyssop there, some more bee balm. I have a couple different kinds of bee balm in here. Uh, sage, you can barely see the sage because it's really cut down in here. Smoke bomb is not a medicinal herb, but she loves to hang out in the medicinal herb bed. The farmer's market started last week and uh, it was awesome. I was able to pick up this beautiful pot of, I think they're called Callies. Uh, they kind of look like a cross between an inpatient and a petunia and they're really really pretty we have geese of course they actually have a nest over there but anyways um i thought that'd be really nice to bring in uh the pollinators as, as well as the um tulips that are behind me of course we have our winter sown jugs we have some that are really starting to pop and it's time to get them planted other things are just starting to sprout as this is their time to grow and I actually still have more to bring out here but this is what I've got going so far. The hollyhocks that I planted last year are doing really well. I did not know when I planted them that hollyhocks are a perennial so that's kind of cool but uh, unexpected because I wasn't planning on having this as a flower bed all the time. I was going to rotate my flowers. But it's all good. Um, it'll be a nice flower bed again this year for my pollinators. I have quite a few areas here in my vegetable garden where I have flowers growing because it helps bring in the pollinators and the beneficial insects that help keep down the pests. My garlic is getting really, really tall. I have two and a half beds of those. I have on this side, that side there, and right there. We definitely have more geese coming through. It's a beautiful time of year. <clears throat> I found these two cute little things at a family dollar store and I couldn't resist. Um, the price was very reasonable for some cute little additions to the garden. Um, nothing much is going on in this bed yet. Uh, this is where I'll probably plant my yellow wax beans since they are a bush bean instead of a pole bean. But most of my beans I will be growing pole style beans on all the trellises you see in the garden here. My lavender has made it through the winter. It's just slowly coming out of dormancy because we've had quite a few uh, cold snaps. It gets below freezing at night again. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving it alone. I could trim all the, dumps, the dead stuff back, but at the moment it's best just to leave it be. And then behind that I have sage. And then behind that is a marshmallow plant. And then behind that, my chickens and my ducks. This bed here is a work in progress. Um, I used to have a zigzag pellet fence. If you watch some of my older gardening vid videos, you, would, you will see that fence that used to zigzag. It was really cool looking, but not very practical. It had a lot of wasted space. And because I deal with a very, very invasive plant here called Deadly Nightshade. I can't remember which variety I have. I used to know. <laughs> 
but you can see all the nightshade that's grown up here. I need to be able to get to that back part of the fence, which is actually the back side of my uh, segregation coop, and be able to pull all that nightshade down. And I couldn't with uh, the fence that used to be there. So I gotta pull all that down and clean this bed up um, because with the pallet fence, I couldn't get the grass and everything else that was there. So this bed's going to take a while to get cleaned up, but we're getting there. I'm so excited to finally get this back in working order. It's nice that when a garden area becomes overgrown or something, that uh, you can finally get a hold of it and, and start bringing it back and making it a usable space again. So I'm very excited about that. This is my greenhouse and my makeshift potting shed. Uh, we do a lot of reduce, reuse, and recycling around here. Um, so the potting shed is basically made out of pallets and some recycled tarps. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we get really bad westerly winds here because we are in the midst of a bunch of open fields. And uh, the, my potting shed's been literally torn apart. I'll take you inside and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the inside of my potting shed right through the door. You can see that, you can see right through it. Because these tarps have literally been ripped or blown away and my roof doesn't exist anymore either. So my husband has to rebuild this potting shed for me and he'll do that in time. So um, if you see a new potting shed in the future videos, now you know why we had to get a new one. So that is the garden update for the month of May here. I'm hoping towards the end of the month that there's going to be a lot more growing that's going on. But if not, that's okay too. Uh, we usually have frost in this area up until June. And sometimes even into the first week of June because our weather has been going really up and down. And uh, it's just crazy. So I will make sure to keep you guys updated on what's growing in the garden. If you found this video exciting and encouraging to maybe get out there and work on your garden, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you would like to stay updated with what's going on out here in the garden, as well as other tips, tricks, and chicken updates, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. I'd love to have you along on the journey. And as always, I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye.